Makes me just a little sad on the inside when I think all the things I'm missing out on at Paragus, being in the office, dogs running around all wild and jubilant and stuff. It's the type of stuff that makes you feel all warm on the inside. The type of stuff you gotta hold on to. The thing I miss about my Paragus IT friends is how much fun they bring to my everyday life. They make me want to come to work more than I want to be at home. Don't tell my wife. Hello, Paragas. I miss you, friends, co-workers. <laughs> Lately, it's been tough being alone. <laughs> I'm doing a full impression of Morgan Freeman's Nelson Mandela character. Or am I Nelson Mandela? Who knows? And to all my friends at Paragus, oh, how I miss you so. And to Delcy Bean, oh, Delcy Bean, who crawled through a river of shit and came out clean on the other side, oh, Delcy Bean. I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged, that's all. Their feathers are just too bright. Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are all having a good day so far. Appreciate you indulging me while we took a trip down memory lane. Our staff were a little stir crazy at the very beginning of the pandemic, and uh, that was the video they made in their free time. We'll give it just another minute or two, and then we're going to get started. All right. Well, it is past 11 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in to be respectful of everybody's time this morning. Thank you, as always, uh, for those of you who have attended our past webinars and for anybody who's new. We appreciate having you today. Really, the goal for our conversation today is to look at how we can use Microsoft Teams uh, a little bit further kind of in terms of your deployment. So going a little bit deeper, trying to implement it a little bit further and specifically around voice. So I think a lot of people have found that in the last three years, kind of to the point of that pandemic video that we were laughing at, there are, we've changed the way we work. A lot of us are now, like me right now, having a headset on our head or used to putting ear pods in or find themselves on calls like this one where you're using your computer as your communication tool. And so you're using your microphone and your speakers and whatever equipment you have to make that work. And we've all become quite comfortable with this setup. And so the point of this webinar is to really look at leveraging Microsoft Teams to get rid of the other communication device that some of us are also still managing, which is our phone system. And so that's kind of what brought us here today. We're excited about this. We went live on this just over a year ago. 
Uh, we have been running on Microsoft Teams now for about, I guess it's actually close to 15 months uh, as our phone system and have a lot of very, very positive experience. And we've also implemented it for now close to a dozen clients. And so we thought it'd be great to reintroduce it to anybody um, who had not had exposure or experience with it and give them an opportunity to kind of see what it's capable of and to ask any questions they might have. So without uh, any further ado, I'll go ahead and jump in. Please feel free to make this as conversational as possible. I will try to pay attention to the chat. Certainly feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. And then I will try to leave plenty of time at the end for Q&A. Uh, so if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. All right. So I always like to start off these conversations with kind of addressing the elephant in the room. As you probably have surmised, we are using Zoom for a conversation about Microsoft Teams, and I appreciate the irony here. Uh, the reason that we continue to use Zoom as our webinar platform is I have found that Zoom has a couple of advantages when it comes to external conversations. And I think the reason that's a, an important point is it doesn't have to be a one-size-fits-all. You can use different tools for different purposes. At Paragus, we use Zoom almost exclusively for things like this, webinars, meetings with prospective clients, um, kind of interacting with people who we don't or interact with on an ordinary everyday basis. However, where Teams has kind of become our go-to platform is when we get into any kind of internal communication, any kind of consistent communication, any kind of communication where we're having the same conversation with the same audience over and over again. And I think part of that is just Zoom is more universally adopted. I think everybody in the world is expected to know how to use Zoom and that's just become like a universal expectation. Whereas there are still some people who struggle with Teams if they're not using it every day, if it's not part of their te technology stack that they're comfortable with. So we do use it for presentations like this, but the remainder of this conversation is going to be exclusively focused on the Microsoft Teams product. So let's start with why we're here. Uh, Teams has just skyrocketed. And some of this was right time, right place. Teams had its really big launch, kind of when it really hit critical mass uh, just before COVID. And as you can see, it really took off during that period of time. But I think even putting COVID aside, Microsoft Teams really has figured out something pretty important. And it has become really, really popular, really, really quickly. It's one of the most quickly or uh, most rapid adopted products that Microsoft has ever created. Uh, and I think for those of you who have used it, for better or for worse, you can appreciate why. So why is it? Why is it that Microsoft Teams has become so popular? Well, really what it comes down to is the integration of Teams across the Microsoft 365 platform. In many ways, Microsoft Teams is not just a tool but it is an interface that we use to access a lot of the other products in Microsoft that we're all already using. And that's not to say that Microsoft is the best company in the world or their products are the best in the world, but for better or for worse, most of us use them in our daily lives. Most of us run our companies on things like Outlook and Word and Excel and PowerPoint. And because it is kind of the ubiquitous platform um, of the business community, when you have ways of making things more streamlined, more connected, more accessible, it can have a really big impact on things like productivity, accessibility, and security, which is one thing that we're constantly worrying about and paying attention to. And so it's really, it's not just that Teams itself is a good product, because the product itself standalone it's good. There's other products out there that might even be arguably better. But where Teams really gets its leg up is the integration with the rest of all the tools and applications and data and information that we're all already using. I think that is what has contributed to kind of this mediocre, uh, me mediocre, uh, meteoric rise that they have experienced. So for those of you who are not totally familiar with the Microsoft 365 stack, uh, this is just the 365 side. This doesn't even really factor in the Azure side of house. Azure is another rapidly, rapidly um, kind of exploding Microsoft cloud platform. But just on the office side, you've got you know practical and functional skills, things like SharePoint and Power BI and some automate technology. Then you have your creative platforms. Most of us are probably familiar with PowerPoint, but there's also tools like Sway. Then you've got your communication tools. That's where Teams fits in. There's also Yammer, SharePoint would be in that category. You've got the curating information, you know, obviously the classic Microsoft Word, but also front page and some other technologies there. And then you've got the cultural and social stuff, as well as the safety and the critical thinking, like Excel and Delve and some of those tools. 
And so as I was talking about earlier, what makes teams really powerful is this ecosystem that's behind it and its access to it. Uh, when you consider Microsoft Teams as the front end for these, what it does is it creates a single pane of glass for employees to use to access everything else. So and a good example is for a lot of the clients that we work with and for ourselves internally, we have migrated off of the old school file server model. And for those of you who are still on an old school file server, there's actually an entirely separate webinar just talking about moving from those old school traditional legacy file servers to the more modern version of file storage, which is typically gonna be in something called SharePoint libraries. When you do that though, a lot of people don't wanna to have to learn a whole new way of interfacing and interacting with or one more application or one more place they have to go to get their stuff. And so what's powerful about Teams is it becomes this single pane of glass where I can access my data that's stored in SharePoint. I can access my calendar from Microsoft Outlook. I can access my communication, which is the native part of Teams. I can access things like planner, tasks. I can access OneNote, all these Microsoft applications that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis to do my job, can all be accessible to me in this single pane of glass. And I think that's really where Microsoft Teams has gotten its start and probably had the biggest impact on the community and why its adoption has been so strong. So what can Teams do for you and your business and your organization? So the first thing is this idea of having calls and meetings. And I think this is probably for most people, the thing that most organizations have had some experience with Teams. They've been invited to a Teams meeting uh, or they've received a Teams call from somebody. Then you have chat, which is where you're working to have instant communication with those who work for you. And now people who don't work for you, Microsoft has just opened up the capability for Teams to have cross um, tenant conversations. So what that means is anybody else who you know is using Teams, unless they have strictly forbid external communication, you can now have Teams conversations with them as well. I know a number of our staff have started doing that and started to chat with customers, with points of contacts, with vendors over Microsoft Teams so that they can avoid having to send an email and reply and go back and forth and kind of end up in the email world. Then there's the communication and collaboration. So this is kind of where we get more into like things like channels. This is where we're starting to organize information we're building out repositories, we're having a group conversation, we're collaborating on a document, we're leaving comments and notes, we're kind of working together. And then there's the idea of like connecting across your organization. So this is where you can do things like broadcast messages or share important content or have team-wide meetings or company-wide meetings uh, or track important events or milestones that are going on. It's an ability just to create some connection, especially today where we've got a lot of people working remotely, a lot of people working from different offices, a lot of hybrid work schedules. It really helps to blend all that together and create some unity across uh, employees. And then as I was mentioning earlier, it's the seamless integration with 365 that I think is one of the strongest attributes of Teams and one of the things that's really helping it gain so much traction so quickly. So if we agree, or at least if we accept that Teams is going to play a huge role in the future of our businesses when it comes to things like collaboration, communication, efficiency, being able to access it anywhere, anytime, uh, and improving our security, and if we're already going to have to get used to taking both audio and video calls on Microsoft Teams, that is what begs the question, why would we want to continue to have one of these on our desk? And that's really what the heart of this conversation today is about. It's this idea of have we moved beyond needing to have a separate device and a separate technology and a separate platform for voice calls? And when we say voice calls, you know, it's a broad spectrum. Many people have moved to hosted systems where maybe they are doing their calls over the computer, but they're doing it through some app like a Ring Central or something else that they have installed on their computer. Their voicemails go there, their caller ID, their dialing goes there. It's still one more application that they have to manage, have a password to, sign in to, keep track of. It's another vendor, it's another bill, et cetera. Or there are still plenty of companies out there who are doing it more traditionally and actually do have one of these things sitting on their desk and are actually picking up a headset, pressing buttons and talking through a headset uh, to make a phone call. And the question is really, have we gotten to a point where that's not necessary anymore, where we can move beyond that? And that's where the Microsoft Teams voice conversation comes into play. 
So most of us uh, who are using Microsoft Teams as their voice platform are going to take calls like this. They're going to use the same headset or the same earphones or the same kind of configuration that they would use to make an audio or a video call on Zoom or Teams anyway, and they'll use that to make their voice call. Uh, however, Teams is very adaptive. You can also do it on your mobile device. So you get the Teams app on your phone and you can just call people from your phone, except when you call people from your mobile device through Teams, it's not going to show up as your cell phone's caller ID. It's going to show up as your company's caller ID or your individual DID if that's what you want. But your voicemails will go there. It'll ring like a normal phone. So you can use your existing mobile device and basically turn that into an extension of your office, but without having to install another app or reconfigure your phone or do some sort of complex programming. And for those users who really do like the desktop experience or the desk phone experience, I should say, uh, there are still carriers out there um, uh, that will actually make a desktop headset phone that you can use that will work with your Microsoft Teams voice system. So yeah, Link is one of the companies that we use a lot and they create, you know, very attractive looking phones of all kinds of spectrums in terms of sizes and features and complexities and costs that will allow somebody who wants to have that more traditional phone experience on their desk to do so seamlessly. But when you say seamlessly, what I mean is it's completely ubiquitous across all your devices. So you could have it on your computer, on your cell phone, on your desk phone. And when a call comes in, it's going to come in on all those things. You can pick it up where you want to answer it. You can call where you want to. Your voicemail is all the same. It's all one device. Think of these as just front ends. So this phone is no longer your phone. It's a portal into your phone account. And so you can use this phone to access your calls and access your voicemail, um, but it is just one of many points of entry into that, uh, which makes it really universally acceptable. It makes it really easy to adapt and mold as you wanna change things around or shift things up. And then of course, you've got really cool technology for your meeting rooms. So there's a whole category of products now called Teams uh, Meeting. And in a Teams meeting family, you've got everything from kind of these cool cameras that do the pan and the zoom and figure out who's in the room and kind of focus on them to these devices that you can have on the desk, which can allow you to join meetings and share screens, access content. And there's even some really cool stuff like the Microsoft Surface Hub, where you can have like an interactive, almost like a, um, a smart board where you're drawing pictures and sharing information and throwing things up and zooming in and panning out and doing all that really fancy stuff. And that class of technology is expanding very rapidly. And Microsoft, I think, to help improve the adoption of it, just recently made the licensing for that a lot less expensive or in some cases free. So I think Microsoft is really seeing an opportunity to revolutionize the conference room and wants to be a key component of that conversation. And so they're really investing heavily in that space and making it easier, more cost effective, and kind of more impressive with the technology that's being released in that area. So at this point, why would you want to keep doing things two different ways? If the idea behind communication is you want a way to reach out to people and you want a way for people to reach out to you, what's the benefit of having two different email boxes or voicemail boxes, two different communication systems, two different invoices uh, that you're paying every single month? You know, what are you accomplishing by continuing to juggle these two worlds? And I think that's where this conversation really comes in. It's about simplicity. What can we do to just make it easier than ever on ourselves? I think a lot of us are feeling like there's so much going on right now between whatever's happening in the economy, uh, the labor market, all the other variables that are happening and all the other demands on our time. This is one of those things that's like giving yourself a gift. It's just one less thing to manage, one less thing to buy, one less thing that can go wrong and ruin your day. One less thing that you have to try to figure out how to deal with, remote into, connect in a person environment, onboard employees on, set up users for, manage a vendor, pay a bill. It's just one less thing. And as silly as that may sound, I think that's probably its most attractive feature is it's just one less thing that we have to deal with in our businesses and our lives. And these days, one less thing is valuable. That's helpful. Uh, there's just so much else going on. So what I want to do now is I want to just kind of quickly pause and I'm going to show you just a really brief demo of what the interface looks like. It's not that exciting. It's super simple, but that's kind of the point. Um, it's made to be super simple. Uh, so I'm just going to show you what this looks like. So here is my Microsoft Teams client. 
Uh, many of you might be familiar with Microsoft Teams already. Many of you on this call, I assume, are probably already using it for lots of other purposes like your internal communication. However, what's different in your case is when you press this calls button, if you have it, uh, those of you who don't have Teams voice are not going to see what I'm seeing right now. So if you have Teams voice, suddenly this screen becomes available and you have a dialing pad. I can see what my phone number is, the number that you could call me on right now. I can see a couple of quick options right here, which is if I wanted to forward my calls. So if I just want to forward all my calls to voicemail because I'm in this meeting and I don't want anybody to interrupt me, I can just quickly toggle that. And I can control where my calls come in on. Do I want them to come in on my USB audio device or on the headset that I'm wearing on my head right now? I can easily toggle that anytime I need to. Then I can see the history of calls that I've made or received, very similar, you know, nothing earth shattering or groundbreaking here. I can see my missed calls, my incoming calls, of course, and I can see my voicemails. And what's kind of nice about the voicemails is everything is transcribed for you. So I can see my voicemails, who they're from. I can click on it. And if I click on a voicemail, I'm going to see the full transcription over here. And then if I want to see the rest of it, I can scroll there. I can play the voicemail. I can change the speed of it. Um, and I can call this person back very quickly if I need to. Again, these are not features that are not common in most phone systems. This is kind of considered par, uh, but it's the simplicity, the integration, the accessibility that make this so attractive. So for most of my calls, this is all I'm using. I'm just coming in here, dialing a phone number, forwarding things to voicemail, checking my call history. When you do enable Teams, what you'll find is that on any website that has a phone number, if you click on it, it will open up the Teams app for you and allow you just to call the person directly, again, just using your Teams account. Then if you wanted to change some of the more advanced settings, uh, you can click into your settings. You can go to specific to calls. And in calls, you have a couple of more options. You know, Right now, I have them sorted to my voicemail. I could switch that back to me. If I change this, I could say, instead of going to my voicemail, I want to go to like my cell phone number, or I want to send all my calls to somebody else in the office. Maybe I'm going to be gone for a week. And while I'm gone, somebody else in the office is going to take all my phone calls for me. I could just select that and literally just find that person in my address book because we're all connected. I could send all my calls to that person or to their cell phone or to their team's voice account. Uh, and I could also send it to a group. So if there's five people who I want to get my calls while I'm gone and one of them will answer, I could pick a group, pick people for that group and send all my calls to that. Of course, I can configure my voicemail. When I do that, I can do things uh, like record my own personal greeting. I can change whether people are allowed to leave me messages or not and languages. I can turn on text to speech. Um, Anything else I want to do here, one of the things I do like is I can sync it with my Outlook office greeting. So if I create a specific kind of I'm away from the office greeting, I can have that turn on anytime my out of office is turned on in Outlook. Again, other phone systems can do this too, but it's just a nice, easy way um, to make it so that I don't have to remember to switch over my voicemail, which I often forget to do. Uh, there is also a pretty good text to greeting situation. So if you just wanted to type out, maybe you're somebody who doesn't like the sound of your own voice or you don't like recording your own messages. Uh, a lot of people will come in here and just type out what they want their greeting to be. And you can have both your normal one as well as your out of office one. And then a very polite Microsoft AI robot will read your message for you. And uh, she's actually pretty good in terms of her pronunciation and kind of um, tone, but you can play with it a little bit and get it just the right way. And I've heard there are some new languages coming out, not only new languages, but new voices coming out. Right now, you only have the one option for English, uh, but I've heard they're coming out with a couple of different uh, options. Um, if you like a male voice versus a female voice, et cetera. Then you can set your ringtones, right? The important stuff. You can have different ringtones for calls versus forwards versus delegated calls. Uh, you can turn on TTY mode. This is actually kind of a surprisingly cool feature. And what this is going to do is it's going to transcribe all your phone calls for you. So obviously, if you are hard of hearing, this is vital. But for those of us who aren't hard of hearing, but like to have a transcript of our phone calls, it's a really cool feature. You just turn this on, and the system will basically use voice recognition to transcribe anything somebody says to you. Uh, and then it will save a copy for you at the end of the call. So this can be a nice uh, thing that I have seen businesses use. And then down here, the last setting I have is this shows which call cues I'm in. So basically, there's two ways you can get a hold of me. You can call my phone number, which is right here. Or if you call one of these groups by like calling the auto attendant and Morgan Freeman answers the phone and he says, are you calling for sales? Are you calling for support? You know, that kind of thing. Based on which options you select, those are called call cues. 
I can see right here which call queues I'm in. These are the three that my name appears in, and I can tell you whether or not I'm receiving calls for those queues right now. So right now, the only calls I'm able to get are sales calls. If somebody called in for client support, which is our CS department, or called our emergency line, my phone wouldn't ring. But because I am a member of these queues, if I wanted to change that, I could just do that. And now all of a sudden I will get emergency calls. And then I realized that was a terrible idea. And now I don't get emergency calls. So you can toggle these things on or off, which can be nice because sometimes you have a situation where maybe you've got some coverage where normally you want the fault calls to go to somebody, but when that person's out or that person's busy, you want somebody else to pitch in. You can add them to the group, but then toggle them out. And then when that person wants to get those calls or you want them to, you can just toggle them back in. So it can be a nice, easy way just to manage what are called call groups or call queues in Microsoft vernacular. Beyond that, it's going to do all the things that you would typically expect. If you make a phone call, you can put that call on hold. You can conference other people into that call. And you can do what's called parking the call. Parking the call is where basically you press a call park option. It's going to give you a, a special code. And then I could go like into Microsoft Teams and say, hey, this person's on the phone. I need anybody who's available to take it. It's on park seven. And then anybody can come in here, hit parked calls, type in seven, hit pick up, and they're going to get connected to that call that's been parked. Um, I can transfer calls, of course. I can do the typical transfer where like, I tell the person I'm transferring to them, then they take it. I can transfer to their voicemail, or I can do an automatic transfer, which just goes right to their phone. So again, I think for the most part, the, the features that you would expect, and that's where Microsoft has been successful, is they got this product up to the point where it's parity with the traditional phone systems that we're using as an alternative. At this point, from a call routing standpoint, a call queue standpoint, a call messaging standpoint, there's really nothing it can do that your typical ring central or other traditional phone system can do and so once you've got it on that same basis point it becomes an attractive option for all the reasons we've talked about earlier and microsoft did that very quickly this was really kind of the, the phone piece of it was really in the last three years they have made a tremendous amount of innovation very very quickly to catch up with the market and to have a product that is actually usable so the next thing that I want to kind of bring you back into and talk to you about is just how we have decided to structure our calling. So when you set up Microsoft Teams voice, you have a couple of options. You can use Microsoft's call network. So I don't know how many of you know too much about telco and how calls are routed and how calls work. But when you are making voice calls, you have to use carriers networks. You have to use things like uh, Verizon's lines to transfer calls to connect people in different parts of the country and different parts of the world. And that re requires what's called a carrier network. And a lot of those carrier networks are quite complex and involve a lot of hops and a lot of steps. So when you turn this on, one option is you can use Microsoft's calling network. Microsoft calling network is pretty good. We haven't had any major, major problems with it, but sometimes the call quality isn't as great as we would like it to be. And sometimes there's been some glitches or some bugs where the carrier network has been down in one part of the country and it's caused problems. So what we decided to do, and Microsoft gives you the freedom to do this, is while we're using Microsoft Teams as our phone system, we're using a company called Juxto as our carrier. And so Juxto is actually the back end that is doing the actual routing of all the calls, connecting of all the calls. And we chose to work with them because they are one of the world's best communication companies. They have phenomenal connection points, tons of investment in infrastructure. They have all the right relationships and networks in all the right places. And it has made the call quality, the call consistency really well to a point that we feel very comfortable with them as the back end to our product. This just shows you a little bit of kind of what their global network looks like. These are all the places where they actually have infrastructure set up to route and process calls. So depending on where you're calling, you're going to go through one of these hops. These are kind of the connection points where your network, where your call is going to get routed from and to. And then just a little bit more on Juxto. This is at kind of a more technical level, how their networks are set up. So you can see kind of who their backend partners are. Cogent, AT&T, and Cox are their three biggest providers on the kind of West Coast. And on the East Coast, it's Verizon, Cogent, and Zao. And you can see kind of how their network is structured and routed. These are their two major hubs. And you can get a sense of kind of 
how their calls are configured. For most of us, this is pretty technical. It's not super critical that we understand this. Really what we're understanding is that we're investing in a company that has a really deep backend network who knows what they're doing and has set up their infrastructure to be really kind of world-class. The other thing that we like to point out is that they have phenomenal integrations with a handful of third parties. So obviously Teams is the one that we're most talking about today, but a lot of people are also looking for an e-fax solution, or maybe they're using Salesforce and they want, when they call, a call comes in, that contact in Salesforce to pop up on their screen, maybe even store the transcription of the recording for them. Some people are using Five9, which is a call center, to handle their inbound calls for them. So either during business hours or maybe just during after hours, you can have Five9 be your backend call center. Obviously, Microsoft Dynamics is kind of a competitor to Salesforce, so that's another CRM uh, type solution. And then there's Telex. There's the ability to do SMS, and there's Voice AI. Voice AI can listen to your calls for you and detect things like customers getting frustrated engineer saying things they're not supposed to say, um, have alerts that go off if somebody says something like cancel or return or lawsuit, <laughs> you know, all kinds of AI you can apply to monitor phone calls and alert you to different things going on. And so one of the reasons we like Juxto is they have really good relationships and integrations with third parties. So for example, we needed the ability to do call recording and we need the ability to send text messages. They were able to turn both of those features on for us, but still within the Microsoft Teams platform. So we, again, don't have another application to manage, another thing we have to deal with. It's all done within Teams. And then I think the last thing I've got on Juxto is just real what they would consider carrier grade analytics, where the call was routed, where it got, went, all the customized custom on the phone, how long did somebody have to wait on hold? What's the average call time? All of those metrics that for some, they will track that for you. And they're also going to monitor uh, security. So they have some robocall and use lock, what's called telephony denial of service attacks. That's when somebody bombards you. And then they also have technology that is really good at detecting and preventing fraud. Uh, so these are some of the things that, as opposed to going directly through Microsoft on the back end carrier side. But at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is I have Microsoft Teams, Teams is where I make all my phone calls, Teams is right there. All right. So from a technology standpoint, there really isn't that much more to explain or show. And that's kind of what I love about this is it's hard to even give you a half an hour's worth of content on it because it's really pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, the question typically is, if this kind of makes sense and you're thinking, yeah, I can see why people would want to do this, it's usually about where do I go from here? Does this make sense for my business? Does it make sense right now? When does it make sense? How would I move forward with this? Kind of what would this look like? So at a really high level, that's what we're here for. We are a technology company. We've chosen to really lean into Microsoft Teams voice. And I think that's probably important because historically, we've always stayed out of telco. Our philosophy has always been to let the telco people deal with telco, and we'll deal with the networks and the systems and the infrastructure. However, because of the deep integration with Microsoft, because of all the back end kind of overlapping with the stuff that we're already managing for our customers, we have decided to lean in and really become experts in this particular product. So we're not the ones that can help you get a new PBX phone system or implement Ring Central. But if you do want to go this route of taking a look at Microsoft Teams as an option, that's where we do have expertise and would be happy to help you. So usually the first step is to get a quote. And a quote is really simple for us to create. It doesn't take a lot of energy. Uh, we ask you probably 10 or 15 scoping questions so we can understand the labor that's going to be involved. The licensing is super simple. It's a flat rate per user per month. That one's kind of a no-brainer. Um, but what we do need to figure out is what Microsoft licensing you already have, because that'll determine which licensing we have to sell you. Outside of the licensing piece, we just have to figure out the labor. And the labor is going to be dependent on things like how many users do we need to set up? How many auto attendants? How many menus? How many prompts? Like, what's the complexity of your phone system? Are there different rules after hours, during business hours? Is there an on-call system? Is there a paging system? Those are the kinds of things that we need to understand to be able to give you an adequate labor quote. Uh, and then the other thing we'll talk to you about is additional features. So like, are you looking to be able to do texting? Are you looking to be able to uh, do e-faxing or do call recording? And then beyond that, we need to understand if there's desktop phone requirements. Like, are there people who are going to want the actual physical desktop phone? Are there conference rooms that need to be outfitted? Are there headsets that need to be purchased for people who don't already have them? The hardware side. And that's really it. Like I said, it's 10 or 15 questions. We get the answers to those. We can turn on a quote pretty quickly. 
from there, I find it's really about timing. You have to look at what is your current phone company contract? Is it a three-year deal that you're a year into? Is it a three-year deal that's up for renewal? Is it a month-to-month -month commitment? That's one of the first things you have to understand because in most cases, this is going to be pretty similar to what you're paying now if you're using a hosted phone system. The pricing is quite similar, but what you don't want to do is be paying for two phone systems. So a lot of times we'll have customers say, yes, this makes a ton of sense. I like this. I can see why I'd want to do this, but I have a year left on my contract or I have two years left on my contract. Those are the situations where really what it makes sense to do is kind of put this in the bucket of, okay, let's get this slated in for Q1 2025, because that's when our contract will be expired. We'll get the quote refreshed the quarter before. We'll get all the hardware we want ordered, and we'll get the porting all set up so that we can cancel our contract and move things over pretty seamlessly. So it often does take a little bit of planning. But if you are in a month-to-month -month arrangement and you have the flexibility to implement this sooner rather than later, then it can be a very easy decision. And the process itself is pretty straightforward. And we're going to do most of the heavy lifting. So it's our job to know all the right questions to ask, to know the process. You know, we like to use the Sherpa analogy. It's our job to do the heavy lifting, to know the path, to know the route. And you just get to come along for the ride and enjoy the view. So this is typically what a timeline would look like. We would update a review and make sure we've got a final quote that includes everything that you're going to need to know. We're then going to sit down and do a workflow uh, kind of wire map of your uh, auto attendance. So how do calls come in? What numbers can they come in from? Where do they go? What are the options? What are the call routing? Kind of what does that look like? Then the next step is porting your numbers. So we take all the phone numbers that you have today. We fill out some paperwork to port them from wherever they are today over to Juxto, who's going to own the numbers at that point or host the numbers, I should say. You still own them. Then we will identify and install all the hardware that you've requested to make this possible. We can do a lot of testing and training. What I love about Microsoft Teams is it isn't one of those like hard cuts. A lot of phone system implementations, there's no way to straddle two systems because Teams isn't going to like require a jack at your desk, assuming you're using your computer to do it. We can do testing for months before we actually go live. So we can set it up and get all the numbers programmed and you guys can start making outbound calls. Um, and really using this system and getting comfortable and familiar with it way before we actually have to have you go live. And then when everything has been tested, everybody's comfortable and everybody loves it, then it's just a matter of actually flicking the switch where the numbers start ringing into your phone system. Um, and at go live that way is a lot less stressful, a lot less um, exciting <laughs> in a bad way. You know, phone system cutovers, probably many people on this call have experienced one or two that did not go so well. And this is kind of meant to relieve uh, some of that anxiety and frustration. So that is what I have for you. As I said, there's only so long I can draw out something so simple. Uh, so at this point, I would love to open it up for questions, for thoughts, for ideas, uh, anything you guys got have. All right, so the first question is, what is the cost per user? So it's a little bit, I'm going to give you an answer, but I will say we do have to first look at what your Microsoft licensing is today. There are some customers and some businesses who have Microsoft Teams voice included in their existing licensing. So we've actually had proposals where we've looked at their account and said, oh, you're already paying for the license or half of the license. You only need this one add-on. But let's say that you're not paying for either, $15 per user per month is the most typical number. So $15 is going to give you, there's technically two different licenses, and that's going to give you the combination of those two licenses together. Um, so if you're just trying to do rough napkin math and kind of plan for this, I usually tell people plan on $15 per user per month that you want to have a phone number. Now, not everybody needs a phone number. It's really up to you if you want a user to have a phone. A lot of people are looking at their employees and realizing, I've got a bunch of people who don't need to make those kinds of phone calls. They're either just going to be sending emails or just using Teams and Zoom, and they don't need like an actual phone number, phone number, and they don't need the ability to call people on a phone number. You don't have to buy licenses for them. But for the people who you want to be able to use it as a phone number and have a 10-digit number, uh, then you would need to pay $15 per month for those users. Other questions? What's the call quality like? Okay, so this is an important thing to understand. It was actually something I didn't understand as well either. 
when you're on a Teams call, not a Teams voice call, but a normal Teams call, you're using uh, a different network than you'd be using for Teams voice. So when you're on a normal Teams call, you're using the traditional internet network. You're using your Comcast ISP, and we're just talking over kind of the, the internet network. When I'm making a seven-digit phone call or a 10-digit phone call, I am going over an entirely different network. And that's that carrier network that we were talking about. That's where the AT&T and the other carriers, Verizon, that we're using their backbone infrastructure. Those networks are designed much differently than the networks that we use for voice calls. So we have had people at times who have said something like, hey, I've been on a lot of Teams calls and it cuts in and out and it's kind of crackly. It's not the way I'd want like my phone call to work. Well, here's the good news. That's not actually the way your voice calls are going to work. They're using an entirely different network and a Teams voice call is because there's only so many carriers who literally own these lines and it's their lines that you're using to make and connect these calls. So it's a very different quality. Somebody asked, can you... Can just the receptionist have an actual phone and everyone else uses their computer? So that's an interesting question. It really depends on the situation. If the only, if nobody in the company needs to make an outbound phone call, meaning if I'm sitting at my desk and I don't need to be able to dial a 10 digit number to make a phone call, then I would not technically need a team's voice license because I can get a call transferred over to me. It's a little kludgy though, because if the call comes in as a 10 digit number to the receptionist and they want to transfer it to somebody else, they would have to conference the other person in. They won't be able to do a direct transfer because that person doesn't have a, uh, a team's voice account. When you do a consult and you connect the two calls, it allows for a marriage between Teams voice people and actual just Teams people. So there's kind of a hack, a workaround. It's not perfect. It's not volume, especially for a few users. That can be a way to kind of get around buying Teams voice licenses for certain people. Somebody asked, do I have to change on my phone number? So no, that's the number porting process. So what's going to happen is we're going to identify all the phone numbers you have today. You may have a DID for every employee. You may have a couple of main numbers. You may have an 800 number. You may have uh, some fax numbers. All of those are going to be included in the port and moved over to the new carrier. So you don't lose your phone numbers. They transfer, and it's, it's pretty instantaneous. We schedule a date and time for that final cutover. Let's just say it's 11.30 a.m. on a Tuesday. At 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday, your old phone stops ringing and your new one starts ringing when people call that phone number. And you can move and port any kind of phone number, 800, normal numbers, local numbers, everything. One thing that is different in Teams Voice is everybody needs a number. So sometimes we go to customers and they're not used to every employee having their own DID. They just have like one main number and everybody has like a three-digit extension that they call. In this system, everybody's going to have a DID. You don't have to use it. You don't have to give it out to anybody. It can be a private thing. The caller ID, if you want, can still show just the main number but technically everybody will have their own private phone number. So if somebody wanted to give out their private phone number to somebody and have that call come in directly to them, they could do that and use that private phone number as a way to um, receive that call directly without having to go through the auto attendant system. But again, it's entirely up to you. It's not a requirement. So with Teams phones, everyone will need their own headset. So it's entirely up to you. The, you know, the thing when I get this question, I always ask is, well, how are people joining Zoom calls today? How are people having uh, video meetings today? If they're using a headset to do that, then they're going to keep using that same headset. If they're just in a private office where they can just use their computer, microphone, and speaker, and they don't need to wear a headset, then they're just going to do that. If they've been putting in their Apple earbuds into their ears and using that to make the, you know, to be on a Zoom call or a Teams call, then they're going to do that. Whatever technology they're using to do audio video conversation today is the same technology they would use to have a Teams voice call. It's the exact same platform, the same technology. So if you have a bunch of people who are going to be on the phone at the same time in one area, I do strongly recommend headsets if you don't already have them. Uh, the headset I'm wearing right now is one that has really good noise cancellation. So if there's a lot of people talking behind me, you're only going to hear me. You're not going to hear all the noise around me. And similarly, I'm really only able to hear you. The noise around me is being blocked out. So it helps me to focus and be able to pay attention. Um, so I think that a good investment in headsets is worth it, but they're not required. You're going to use whatever you have been using to make Teams and Zoom calls for the past three years.
what happens when it's down. So that can happen. It's not common that Microsoft has an outage or kind of a, a total complete failure. But what would happen in that case is your calls are just going to continue to go to voicemail because the voicemail is managed on different equipment. So let's just say, for example, your team's client was down and you couldn't receive phone calls. The caller is still going to be able to get to a voicemail box and leave a voicemail and then you would call them back. Um, I think since we've gone live on Teams, and man, I'm so hesitant to even say this aloud, I don't think we have once experienced an outage where we were not able to make and receive phone calls. There are sometimes these like regional things where like a couple of areas are having trouble, but I can't think of a time since we've gone live that we've seen a network-wide error or a network-wide outage. So somebody asks, what happens if our internet is down? That's a great question. So let's just say I'm at work like I am right now, and the internet at my office goes down. So there's a couple options. One, we strongly recommend everybody have an internet backup. These days, it is ridiculously inexpensive and easy to set up an internet backup. The technology we've been using most recently is Verizon Wireless has a 5G a device that we can put in your server closet and we can just tell your router if Comcast goes down or where I have Spectrum, if Spectrum goes down, just switch over to Verizon and stay on Verizon until Spectrum comes back up. So that's one thing is have an internet backup. If you have internet backup, your phones will keep ringing, no interruption, no problem. And that's not true today. A lot of people who have phone systems in their office, if that line is down, it can't fail over because it's a dedicated line for that phone. Whereas in this case, any internet connection will do. So you can have an internet failover. The second thing is your phone on your cell phone is still going to ring. So your Wi-Fi goes off, but you have your Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile network, and your calls are going to keep coming into your team's voice client on your cell phone. So if my internet drops, I can start making and receiving phone calls from my cell phone and continue to operate that way. And if I want to, I can just go somewhere else where there is internet or power. So sometimes that means going to the coffee shop across the street. Sometimes it means working from home. You know, during the last major snowstorm, we were without power for almost almost seven days at my house. So I came into the office for those seven days and had access to internet and phones that way. But what's nice about this is your phone calls are wherever you are uh, and wherever there's a device that's internet connected. So it can be your cell phone, it can be your laptop, it can be your iPad, it can be your uh, desktop at home. Any device that is signed into Microsoft Teams is by default your phone and you can make and receive phone calls there and it's all interconnected. So I'll see the same call history, the same voice mailbox, the same everything, no matter whether I look at it on my phone, my computer, my laptop, my iPad, it's all gonna look identical to me. And so my phone is no longer a device. My phone is a service. And I think we got very comfortable with this with email. I think these days, most of us realize like our email is not tied to one computer. It used to be, it hasn't been for a long time. I can get my email on my phone, on my laptop, on my friend's phone, from a computer to hotel conference room. My email is accessible to me on any device at any time in the world. And that's been true for a long time. Think of that as it applies to your phone. Now your phone, just like your email, is just a service and it's available to you from any internet connected device that you have, as long as you can sign into Microsoft Teams. Any other final questions before I send you guys back to enjoy the rest of your day? If I work from home and remote into my computer, can I still receive and answer calls? That's actually a really good question. When people are remoting into their computer, uh, they have a couple options. They can take the call from their remote computer, but then the audio has to be passed through the remote connection. If you have really good internet on both sides and really good equipment on both sides, that can work. But for most people, what you recommend is set it up so that you're going to get that phone call on your home computer or on your cell phone, not on the computer you're remoted into at work. What we find is that for a lot of people who don't have flawless internet connections or perfect equipment, you can get some audio loss in trying to patch that call over the remote connection because your headset and you are not going to be in the same place your computer is. And so that audio has to be moved from the computer where the call is coming into to where you are. And so that transfer can lose some call quality. So a lot of times what we'll tell people is if you're going to work from home, just sign into Teams on your home computer. 
do everything else on a remote computer. But if your phone rings, just answer it uh, and it'll come through your headset and you can take the call locally or take it on your cell phone and get your calls that way. Uh, but that tends to work better for people who are working remotely. We're also just seeing kind of an end of people remoting into things. As you move more and more to Microsoft 365, there no longer is a reason to remote into it because everything is just on the internet and you can access it from any device anywhere. Uh, but for those of you who do still have to remote in, our recommendation is typically take the call locally or on your cell phone, not on the remote computer. It's the same thing as we don't typically tell people to watch a YouTube video over that remote connection. If you've ever tried that and it hasn't been great, that's a good example of why you, your phone call probably isn't gonna work either. So if you're not able to watch YouTube videos when you're remoted in, you probably can't take phone calls either. All right, well, I think that is all the questions. If anybody on this call wants to learn more about this product or wants to potentially get a quote and look at what it would cost to get it for their business, please do not hesitate to reach out. We're happy to talk to you. Uh, following this presentation today, you'll get an email that has a copy of the recording and some contact information. So if you wanna reach out and talk more, please don't hesitate to do so. Uh, we'd love to help you with this. As you can see, it just makes sense. It's one of those things that's just simple and easy. And at the end of the day, just makes life easier. And so anything that we can do for that uh, is really in line with making IT fun, which is what we're passionate about here at Paragus. So thank you all for, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.